Hey class, today I'm going to show you how to make a paracord lanyard or keychain. Uh, so what makes the difference between these? Um, the thing that's the same is each of them have five inches of this cobra weave and the loop on the end is what's different. So this one uh, is long enough to go over my head so I could wear it around my neck as a lanyard. This one is a kind of a medium length and it's long enough that I could loop it over my hand. And this one is the shortest and it will go over my thumb or a finger. And so those are the difference between these. Uh, these are made uh, from paracord. So paracord is a nylon material, um, will um, work very easily uh, and uh, is really strong. It's uh, para means parachute uh, cord, and so uh, military members started using this stuff to, to make things, uh, and it's good in a survival uh, use because you can untie your bracelet later, and you could use it for some actual cord if you needed to. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to basically show you how to remake this one right here uh, with a small loop on it. So I have about seven and a half feet of paracord. The other thing I have is uh, a split ring. So a split ring is a key ring, some people will call it. You could also use a carabiner or you could use a swivel uh, connector. Either one, uh, this is the one I'll give you. So I'm going to start by getting the ends of my paracord together and I'm going to just go down until I find the center of this end, and it's in a knot. That doesn't work very well. So let's try that again. Line up the ends and just follow that down until I get to this. So I've got the end here in a loop. So depending on what I'm creating here, the loop could be very large at the end or very small. Again, I'm making the one just big enough for my thumb or my finger, but the knot will be the same. This is an overhand knot. I'm going to take this end and I'm going to loop it around like that over top. I'm going to go behind and out this hole and that will create my little loop. So before I finalize this knot here, uh, I want to make sure that it is the right size for what I'm doing. I can easily, you can see, take this apart and adjust where that is, but I think I'll be happy with that length right there. And so I'm just going to make sure that my overhand knot here is nice and neat and give it a good tug. So now let's lay this out so we can do our stitching. So we're, again, we're going to have five inches of stitching right here. I'm going to start by finding the end again, and I'm going to go down through my key ring and pull, pull, pull until my knot is right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape down my key ring so that it stays in place. And set this up so that, again, these are each going out to the side. And I'm gonna measure I want five inches from the knot to the key ring there. So I'll lay my ruler on there. And I've done this a few times, so I got that pretty close the first time. Next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and tape down this end. This will just kind of hold this in place while I get started. Okay, so now I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the knotting process. All right, let's start talking about the actual weaving that we're going to do across here. Uh, so that's going to be the step we're going to start with, number one. So I'm going to take the string that's on the right, and I'm going to try to carefully make sure that it matches the picture. So I see in the picture it goes across the front of these two, but this string is in front of it. Okay, so that's step one. Now I'm going to jump to step two. So step two shows me taking the string that's on the left and I'm going to go behind 
these two and out through that hole. So behind those two, out that hole, when I get up here, I'm going to make sure this is nice and snug, nice and neat, exactly the way I want it to be. Okay. Now I've done step one and two. Now I'm going to jump to step three. So this time I'm going to start on the right again, but I have to go behind. So going behind and pull this so that it kind of matches the picture, making sure this is behind and that is behind there. Great. Jump to step four. So step four shows me taking the string on the left, and now I'm going to go across the front of these two, but down through that hole. Make sure as you're going, you can see it's kind of knotting up right there. I'm going to just twist it so that it kind of lays more flat and natural. So from here, I've got my first set of knots done. I've done step one, two, three, and four. Ultimately, what I'm going to end up with is this. So to check your work, you should, we'll look at the other side here. Let's see. To check your work, what you should see is a zigzag running down the middle and these loops on either side. And you can see that they also alternate kind of where they're at, but we always see it's nice and neat, loop to loop to loop, no problems. So to get this, we're just going to repeat those four steps over and over again until we get to the bottom, and I'll show you what to do when we get there. Let's talk about what happens if you run into trouble. So let's say you're picking this up and you can't remember if you started with step three or four. So let's just start. So uh, I'm going to start with step three. And... I'm going to try that. So laying that out, jump to step four, and put that together. If it feels like it's not laying flat, then I know that I stopped or I started with the wrong step. So I need to unknot this, which is very easy to do. And I'm going to put in step one instead. So we'll start with step one, lay that out. And each of these should feel like they are laying nice and flat. Okay, so nice and flat now. Um, the other mistake that can happen is if I'm going to jump to step three now, if I don't have this string in the correct spot. So laying this out, if I have this string on the front instead of the back, and I go to step four. That shows me taking this and looping it through here. Well, that doesn't do anything. So if it, you, you've done it and uh, it doesn't work out, then that just means that one of these strings was in the wrong spot. Okay, we're getting to the point where we're pretty close to finishing this off. So I'm just going to try to fit as many as I can in this spot up into that knot and I made a mistake so unwind that and it looks like I still have room for one more so I'm gonna just try to get that all the way to there it's probably my last okay Last chance to really make sure everything's nice and neat and tight and there's not room to put. Well, I think I can fit one more in there just by snugging that up a little bit. So, one last. And of course, I'm on camera, so I'm going to make a mistake. There we go. All right, now we're at the end. Okay, so I've got these leftover strings, so I need to clip those off and take care of burning the end. So 
I'm going to grab this off of here and show you how to do that. All right, so I've got the long leftover end here. I'm going to trim that off at about a quarter of an inch using some nice sharp scissors. And I'm going to hold all this stuff out of the way so that it's not in the way. And I'm going to use just a standard lighter. And I'm not trying to put it right on the threads. I'm just kind of holding it slightly away from it. Ultimately, I don't want it to really catch on fire. I just want to get it to start to melt and you'll see it kind of sizzling a little bit. If it does catch on fire, just blow it out. All right, so I've got some good smoke there. I'm gonna hold it here to keep this from pushing out and I'm just gonna push this against my lighter and twist and that flared burnt piece will basically keep this thing from unwinding. So I'm going to repeat that same process on this side. Slightly away from it. And this is nylon's a form of plastic, so it's very flammable and will melt unlike any other types of thread. Again, got it nice and hot, holding it here, and I'm going to push it up against there and twist to flare that out. So what I got at the end is that. Go team! <laughs>